Hi, and welcome to this Fornav coffee break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornav, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we are going to add charts to our Business Central report. To demonstrate how to add charts, we will use the vendor list report from the Fornav report pack. However, you can add charts to any Fornav report from any extension using the instructions from this coffee break. To demonstrate how to add charts to, to your Business Central reports, I'm going to use these steps. The prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will tell you how to collect the data from your, for your charts. In step three, I will add a sparkline. In the fourth and final step, I will add a chart. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will be adding charts in a Business Central on-premise on Docker installation with the Business Central 2020 Wave 1 release. I've installed the Fornav extension and I have executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central Cloud environment. I also have the Fornav designer installed on my PC. The Fornav designer can be downloaded from the Fornav website. Before we can start adding charts to our reports, we need to know where Fornav gets the data to populate those charts. Fornav cannot populate your charts straight from the data set. You need an intermediate data table. This is an in-memory table that gets populated while Fornav iterates through the data set. This means that you cannot use charts in the report headers. You need to wait until Fornav has iterated through the complete data set until you can view it in a chart. Let's have a look at how we can define an in-memory data table. So let's go to Business Central. Today I'll be working on the vendor list, so I'm just going to run it and design it, which will open it in the Fornav Designer. You will notice this is a fairly simple report. I use it fairly often in trainings and demos. It just has a single data item. And if I select the data item and move down into the properties a little bit, you will notice that it has a data table. This is the in-memory data table. And in this in-memory data table, if we drill down into it, we can add columns to this table and we can add, use those columns to, uh, to collect data and to create charts. So I can simply add a new column and select anything from my data set. Today, I will start with the number because I need to know which customer, uh, which vendor I'm, I'm working with in my chart. Then let's add the balance LCY. And let's add the net change just to have a bit of data in the in our chart of course you can add as much as you want and because this is the uh, uh the four and a half scripting window you can actually use javascript here to uh, to concatenate fields or to uh, to get data from uh, from other places in the report at the moment, I'm just using these, uh, uh, these simple fields. So click OK. And then because net change is a calculated field, so I need to add it to my calculated fields. At the moment, only the balance and the balance due are in there. So let's use, let's add net change LCY as well. And that's all I need to do to set up my in-memory data table. Once we have defined a data set, we can use it in a chart. The first thing we will try to add is a sparkline. A sparkline is a simple graph. So let's get back to Fornav. And let's add a new section to add our graphs on. So let's try a body section first. And I can simply drag a sparkline from my controls list. And this sparkline, of course, has properties as well. So the first thing we uh, we set is the view. By default, it's set to line, and I want a bar chart because that makes everything a bit more readable for what I'm trying to do today. And then I get a data property where I can select the data member, which is my list data table, and the value member, which in this case is going to be balance LCY, which is one of the columns in my table. 
and let's preview this in Business Central. So once this shows on the screen, and we'll try and zoom in a little bit, you will notice right here that I now have a bar chart on after every record. And I did this so I could demonstrate to you how these uh, data tables get, get populated. You will notice that in after the first record, I have a single record in my data table and therefore in my chart. After the second record, I have two records in my uh, data table. Then I have three and four, etc., all the way down to the end. If I scroll all the way down to the end, you will notice that I have a, this is a big report. You will notice that I have a fully populated data, data set and I have a workable graph. So that means that I can only use these graphs in the footers of my data sets. So let's put our sparkline in a footer. I'm going to add a new footer right here. Let's move this up. And let's be nice and tidy. Let's call the chart. And move our chart to our new footer. And delete the body section and let's preview again. So this way I'm going to scroll all the way down and zoom in once again. You will notice that now at the bottom, I have a full uh, a full sparkline with all of my uh, all of my data present. And of course, in Fornav, I can select this one and make it, for instance, a line. And when I preview this. You will notice I have a line graph instead of a bar graph. Now we have seen how the data set works, we can add something a little bit more complicated like a bar chart. So back to the four and a half designer. Let's bin our spark line, make a bit more space. And let's grab a chart from the standard controls. And when you add a chart from your standard controls, you get presented with a chart wizard where you can choose which type of chart you want to show. And Fornav has a large number of charts built in right here. And you can choose to go through the entire wizard to set up your chart, uh, but I prefer actually to finish this immediately which gives me my chart, uh, make it a bit bigger, and then set up my chart by hand. So the first thing I need to do with this particular chart is to tell it where to get the data from the display. So if I go to the properties of the chart and scroll down, I end up with a data member where once again, I can choose something from my data table, uh, which is the list. And then I need to choose my series data member my series data member is going to be the bottom axis, uh, which is this one right here. And in the bottom axis, I want to have my, uh, my number because I want to uh, view my chart by, uh, by vendor number. So I'm going to choose my number column in my data set. Then I want to choose which series to, uh, to show. Uh, and to do that, I need to go to my series property. If I scroll down a little bit, I end up with the uh, with the elements where I have a series collection. And if I drill down into this, I have two series. By default, I can add as many series as I want, but I have two uh, columns in my in my data set which I want to show. So I'm simply going to select series one and go to the properties. Now there's two things I need to set. The first, of course, is I need to define the column in my table that I want to show which for the first one is going to be the balance. And I'm going to scroll up and I want to set a legend text, which is going to be balance. And in series two, I need to do the same thing for the net change. So I'm going to select the net change. And in the legend text, I will say net change. And hit close. 
And now my chart is complete and it's ready to preview. So let's have a look and see what OneF makes of this. So let's scroll down a little bit and zoom in. You will notice that Fornav has created a chart for me at the at the bottom of the report with in the in the legend I have the balance in blue and a net change in red. And at the bottom I have my vendor numbers. So for every vendor I have uh, at least every vendor that has data in this report, I have an entry and I can see in my bars the balance and the net change. Let's recap what we just did. We have created a data table and added data from the data set to it. When we added a sparkline, we noticed that the data set was populated as Fornav iterates through the data set. Finally, we added a bar chart. Of course, you can use any type of chart to display your data. So let's see if we have any questions. We have no questions at the moment. If you have any questions, please type them in the GoToWebinar question box. We have a little bit of time whilst I wrap up this session. So if you want to know more, please go to fornav.com and at fornav.com slash download, you can download the Fornav Designer. And from Microsoft App Source, you can download the Fornav extension if you use Business Central Cloud. If you want to see more of these uh, recorded coffee breaks, you can go to YouTube, the Fornav YouTube channel. And if you have any questions after this session, please send them to support at fornav.com. We will keep on doing these coffee breaks for a while, uh, but we are going to have a two week break for a summer, va summer vacation. So at the end of August, we will start, uh, start again with these uh, coffee breaks. Go to fornav.com slash coffee break for a full list of upcoming topics. And if you have any topics for future Fornav coffee breaks, please let us know. And uh, when we pick your topic to do a coffee break on, you get two prizes. The first one being that we do a co coffee break on your topic. And the second one being that we will send you a, a gift certificate as a thank you. So with that, uh, we have a single question. Is it possible to only show vendor numbers for columns with data? Um, yes, that would be possible, uh, but you would need to write some JavaScript in the population of the data table where uh, you need to uh, add a column when where the data is zero or where the data is not zero. So that would be possible, uh, but it would take a bit of tinkering to figure out how to do it exactly. So with that, thank you very much for listening to me today and I will speak to you in a future coffee break. Goodbye.